An estimated 1.2 billion people around the world do not have adequate shelter. But one company is looking to change that with the use of 3D printing. A startup called Icon has released their plan to print a 650 square foot house made of cement in just under a day. Best of all, these homes will only cost $4,000. Joining us via Skype from Austin, Texas is one of the co-founders of Icon, Jason Ballard. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, happy to be here. Yeah, so tell us, how did you come up with this idea to 3D print a home? So I've been working in housing for close to a decade now. The first company that I started, uh, the whole mission was health and sustainability as it relates to housing. And after staring at the problem for 10 years, I realized then rather than continuing just to patch the houses we have, we needed a fundamentally better way to build homes and technology uh, could deliver on that promise. And indeed, 3D printing is delivering on that promise. How is 3D printing a better way to build homes? So 3D printing is faster. It is uh, more affordable because of that. And it actually pr produces a building that has better building performance. It's more comfortable, uses less energy. Um, and then it opens up tons of design freedom, right? You could print a circle or a Fibonacci spiral just as easily as a square. And so it, it's sort of one of those sort of almost unicorn technologies where it's faster, cheaper, better, with more freedom. You know, there's a look at using this around the world. We gave that stat off the top 1.2 billion people without adequate housing. How does it hold up against various weather conditions? So concrete is one of the most resilient materials on Earth. And so compared to, I'm from the Gulf Coast of Texas, where hurricanes are a big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, my childhood home was lost to a hurricane. And Two by fours and drywall are some of the least resilient materials you could possibly build with. And so I think it's an order of magnitude, at least, um, a better material. Explain for us, um, it's just the frame that the 3D printing, printing builds, correct? So the printer can do the foundation, and then it does a wall system that basically replaces insulation, structure, which you call framing, interior and exterior sheathing. And we think we, think we have some ideas to replace additional systems. Yeah, you're replacing not just one, but four or five things at least uh, compared to conventional construction. Wow, how long does it take? So our printer running at full speed could have printed that house in about 12 hours. 12 hours to build a yeah. how big of a home? That one has a footprint of 650 square feet. And then afterwards is when you put in the electrical and the plumbing or whatever various needs you'd, ha you'd Correct. have. Correct. And you can, add, you, know, you can add systems to the home is what we would say, whether that's HVAC or Wi-Fi or plumbing or electrical. You can, you can 3D print all of that stuff? We can. We can print in the conduit so that it's much easier and faster to add or change or repair or maintain, things like that. I'm so curious. What kind of feedback have you had from big industry, people in construction? So people have sort of, this has been sort of an oh wow moment. I, I call it imaginative whiplash because 30 minutes before you would have said it's not possible. And then when you look at it or you see it, it's sort of, it, it is obviously undeniably possible. And so it's, it's actually a really fun reaction to see from people. One of the most fun reactions we've seen from Americans is, holy cow, I would live in that house. You mean that's for El Salvador or the developing world? I mean, I would live in that house. And so it, it's fun for people to realize this isn't just a niche technology, but it is a true paradigm shift. What about workers? You know, we're used to seeing several people on a construction site. It provides a lot of jobs. You know, have you yeah. had any criticism that you're taking some of that industry away? You know, so far, um, we haven't had much of that criticism. It, this isn't a full sort of human replacement kind of automation. It, there is a swap, right? Instead of a framing crew, you're now going to have a machine operator and a material specialist and things like that. But a lot of the other trades like plumbing and electrical still have a place. What are some of the wider implications that you see for using this technology? You know, there, there's a thing right now called the, uh, they're, they're referring to it as the global housing crisis. And it's actually, of course, the 1.2 billion most underserved people in the world need adequate shelter. But in America, and I'm sure in Canada, even working class people are having a very difficult time mm -hmm. affording a home. Uh, and it's shelter is such a basic human need that it's sort of frightening when a large swath of the global population doesn't have access to something so fundamental. Jason, are people living in 3D printed houses right now? Is there anybody who's you know tested this out? <clears throat> yeah, so this is the first 3D printed home in America. And uh, actually, I'm going to be officing out of it because before we sort of uh, let families move in, we really do want to do a full battery of testing sure. for air quality to sort of see how it performs through the seasons and things like that. Okay, well, keep us up to date. Let us know what happens with it. Okay. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much.